It's official. We have the first major economy talking about rate cuts. More on that in a minute. We're going to talk about what Wells Fargo is saying about the U U.S. economy. We can talk about a magic number to retire and really break down what I think might be a better number. We can talk about what's going on in China and the IMF. And finally, we will talk about mortgage rates. So folks, let's get into it. Yes, the ECB, European Central Bank, has come out this morning and said rate cuts are coming. Rate cuts are coming. Now, I don't know about you, but when I look at least the U.S. economy and I think about inflation, GDP, jobs, do rate cuts really make logical sense? Is there something going on behind the scenes that perhaps are forcing rate cuts? In fact, if you were to look at the numbers in the U.S., which we will in a minute, one would actually think a rate hike might be more appropriate than a rate cut. And I know the ECB is not the Fed, I get it, but major economies, if you go back in time, look at the last decade, shoot, look at the um, pandemic, what's happened the last four years. Somebody is always first, that just makes logical sense, but they often follow each other. They often follow each other. So again, rate cuts coming very quickly to the ECB. Could the Fed be behind them? Could the BOJ, Bank of Japan, uh, Bank of England? We shall see. But yeah, I do think it's, I think it's interesting. Let's talk about the U.S. economy. Wells Fargo has come out with their latest and greatest, I don't know, calls, predictions, whatever you would like. The numbers to me aren't necessarily interesting. It's the trajectory and the degree of change. So let's talk about it. Wells Fargo, GDP. They are now calling 2.5% for 2024. What were they calling? They were calling 1.3. Again, look at the delta. That's almost a, uh, that's almost 100%. Think about that. The economy is growing twice as strong as Wells Fargo had originally predicted. But that's not it. Let's talk about unemployment. Unemployment for the end of 2024 is estimated to be 4.1. We are currently 3.7. Where were they? They were originally calling 4.7. Now, you know my line in the sand has not changed. I think 4.2 is the number to watch. We are currently at 3.7. At 4.7, a recession call would be likely. Now they are calling 4.1 for 2024. That's a soft landing and frankly could be a no landing. And then lastly, let's talk about inflation. Okay, so we have a stronger economy. We have better unemployment, but what about inflation? Well, unfortunately, that went the wrong way as well. They are now calling headline inflation to be 3%. 3%. Where were they? They were at 2.8%. So what does this all mean? Again, as we said earlier, the ECB is cutting soon. What about the Fed? Again, we only have so many Fed meetings remaining in the year. And yes, I do believe they will be cutting at a Fed meeting. It won't be intra-meeting. So we have, I think, what, five, five or six meetings left in the year? I think five. So there's going to be no cut, no raise in May, May, June. July is the one to watch. As hopefully you've heard me say over the last 10 days or so, the May CPI report is going to be probably flat given the base effect, but the June CPI could be a problem. If the if, right, underscore if, June CPI is hot, hot, hot like last month, a July rate increase might be required. Now, again, I'm not calling for that. And again, what I would ask the Fed to do, and frankly, what I would ask Jerome Powell to do today, Jerome Powell is speaking today. 
I think Jerome Powell should come out and shock the market. The market is expecting Jerome to say higher for longer, data dependence, blah, blah, blah. I would love Jerome Powell just to sneak in a line that says, you know what? We are prepared to go higher if required. We've had three months of hot inflation. If we have four or five more or two or one or two more, right, to get to four or five, we will go higher. We, I want Jerome Powell to say this. We are not afraid to go higher. Now, that quote, that statement will shock the market because, again, the Fed is, the market is not expecting it. But here's the wrinkle. I don't think the Fed wants to go higher. I think the Fed sees a commercial banking crisis. They see government debt expenditures. But damn it, they need the threat. As I've said since the dot plot, I wore the shirt that said swing and a miss because I wanted the Fed to play 4D or 3D chess. I wanted them to have two Fed members say we're going higher. That would have been enough. But instead, all 18 or 19 said we're, we've gone high enough. Again, I go back to Wells Fargo and I, I, I can't disagree. GDP is stronger, unemployment better, inflation worse. How can you seriously talk about cutting in that environment? All right, folks, let's get back to some housing data. Shout out uh, Altos Research for always giving us this data every week. We had inventory go up, active inventory go up 2.6%. Uh, we are up 30% year on year. We had 67,000 new listings for the week. We saw a big bump because of Easter, uh, Easter last week. Um, 67,000 listings is the largest number uh, for the week, a week in 2024. Uh, Pendings are up to 69,000, so we're still seeing a good turn, right? New listing 67, pending 69, pendings higher than new listings. Uh, pendings were up 7% week on week and 10%, interestingly enough, year on year. Um, Juan, you should start your own YouTube channel, man. Go ahead. If you're so smart, start a channel. Let's see how you do every day. All right, and then 32.1% are price reductions. That is the number that we have to follow, 32.1%. We're going to watch that number every week. If mortgage rates go to 8, 9, 10, whatever, the thing that you and I will watch as active real estate investors is price cuts. Again, what we are looking for is motivated sellers. Folks that have to sell don't want to sell, right? Want versus need, there's a very big difference. So again, that's what we're doing there. How about the magic number to retire? All of these magic numbers to retire are interesting. Uh, they always are about net worth. And of course, um, net worth is not, it's a meaningless number. I have seen net worth swing lots of different ways. Um, but yes, it is... It's not the number I would focus on, but yes, Americans think they need $1.5 million to retire. $1.5 million to retire. That is up 50% in four years. In fact, it's up 15% in one year. So again, folks, uh, don't work. Please don't worry about net worth. What I would ask you to track is cash flow. How much cash comes in that you don't sell one hour at a time? Now that obviously for me started with real estate, built that up over 15, now 22 years. We also have these passive things called books, this YouTube channel, courses, affiliates, all of these things. You can build passive income or semi-passive income one day at a time if you have a plan and a process. Trust me. $20,000 in passive income, in my opinion, is a heck of a lot better than 1.5 million net worth. It just is. You can't live on your net worth. You can live on 20 grand a month passive. So if anybody ever asks you what the magic number is, please, please think cash flow. Think a number above your monthly expenses. Alrighty, folks, we've already talked about, uh, we talked about the Bank of uh, England cutting rates, or Bank of uh, ECB, European Central Bank, ECB, cutting rates. 
We talked about the U.S. and Wells Fargo economy looking better. What about China? China has come out with some interesting economic news. Uh, the economy grew 5.3%, which is above expectations. Exports grew 14%. Uh, retail sales actually disappointed at only 3.1%. What's going on in China? Well, I had a concern, uh, I think I shared it four, maybe six weeks ago, that I'm concerned that China is going to try to reinvigorate their economy, which is a complete mess, by being the uh, by creating deflation in exports. They are going to flood the market with stuff. And it looks like, again, just based on these numbers, that might be coming true. Again, exports up 14%, but the internal economy, right, consumer economy, uh, still in trouble. Uh, only 3% growth, uh, expectations were 4.6, so a pretty significant miss. What about the IMF? The IMF has come up and basically upgraded the global economy. Again, the IMF was pretty negative on the global economy, as were most economists. The IMF now thinks that the economy, the world economy, will grow at 3.2%. If the economy grows at 3.2% and we have inflation at, let's just say, 3%, I always want you to remember a lot of the numbers that come out are nominal, not real. What is the difference again? Real means inflation adjusted. Ask yourself, if the world economy grows at 3.1%, but we have 3% inflation, what did the world economy grow? The answer, 0.1. Folks, I think we are starting to lean towards rolling recession or stagflation. It is gonna be interesting to see how this unwinds. Again, I think a lot of this is because of the $9 trillion or $10 trillion we pumped into the economy. I think a lot of the economic metrics that we have counted on for 40 years, the, the, the 40 the economists need to wake up, myself included. For 40 years, maybe even 50, let's say 50 years, since 1970, we have been working on economic models and business cycles that we understood with some degree of certainty. What we have not seen is a government, and frankly, world governments, pump trillions of dollars into the economy. It takes time. It takes time to unwind that. I think the worldwide economy has indigestion. They're, they're, it's just, we're working through it. And again, a key part of working this out, again, is bankruptcies. We need to, we need to, we need to take malinvestment and punish it. If you are a unicorn company that makes no money, you need to go out of business. If you are a syndicator that didn't know what you were doing and you overpaid and you got LPs to invest, you need to lose your properties. If you are running some kind of Airbnb arbitrage or you were trying to be an Airbnb whatever in some hot market like Palm Springs that changed the rules, you will lose. We need to punish malinvestment, and that hurts, and it's scary, but it is part of working through all this cash shoved into the system. And then finally, folks, we got the 10-year note up again. Uh, we had mortgage rates as of this morning at 7.44. I think it is very likely to go to 7.5, possibly today. I got to ask you, what happens if mortgage rates go to 8%? Let's just have a round trip. Let's go back to 8%. Well, the real estate market's gonna slow down. Is, but, but think about this. Is the real estate market slowing down a bad thing? We know the housing market's broken. Does lowering rates fix the broken housing market? I don't know. I watched an interview yesterday or a live stream with Ken McElroy talking about the way to fix the economy is to lower rates. Man, I don't know. I get what he's talking about. Nobody can build all of that. But wow, really? Want to lower rates, Ken? Maybe talk in your own book. I don't know. Uh, I need to finish the interview, so I, didn't, I haven't watched it all. But I, I thought that was an interesting decision. Again, the housing market is broken. 
We go back to 8%, it slows down. Does it get better? I don't know. But yeah, let's, uh, let's see what's going on. Again, remember folks, like, subscribe, comment, become part of the channel. I do my best every day. If you think you can do it better than me, start your own channel. I already forgot the name of the guy who said that, but hey, if you're some big shot, give it a shot. See, what, see, uh, see how it is making a call every day. If you want to get started in real estate, there is no better. Yes, thank you, Michael. Juan, Juan, if you're, uh, if you're so good at this, start a channel. If you want to get started in real estate investing, how to get started one rental at a time is the place to be. Uh, over the last couple of days, you have seen me get some coaching. You get some recommendation that I need to simplify and raise the prices. Folks, it's just not who I am. I want to provide something that it greatly exceeds expectations. In fact, if you buy the course, I'm still giving you the $200 Vegas event. How cool is that? Uh, join the Facebook group. That is the place to be. Also, remember, I want you to seriously think about taking your passion, your interest, and creating your own community, your own tribe. I think if you do that while working, you will roll into the second season, i.e. post-retirement, happier, better off financially, and just having a good time. Folks, I would ask you to watch my, I think I called it uh, 10 steps to starting YouTube or something with Casey yesterday. That is an important video. Again, I think, all, I have confidence that all of you that watch this channel, all of 185 of you that are watching this live right now, you show up consistently and I thank you. That consistency is exactly what it would take for you to build your thing. It will be slow, it will be scary, but it will be worth it. Alrighty folks, take care of yourself, have fun, later!